to be perfect. Go ahead and select both. And we'll go ahead and select that bottom section there and pull this out. Like so. And don't forget there's a little poke through on the back side as well. So we'll get that taken care of using the polygons here. We'll just uh, select these two back sections where uh, more of the buttocks actually flows out there. And normally when you're building a, a model for anything that has uh, spherical models underneath, such as the buttocks or the breasts or the shoulders, you actually want to go ahead and make this a circular polygon, but we're actually just doing this for quick practice. So what we're going to be doing is using the same polygon selections that we have here, and we're going to delete this top, hold down, and rotate. We'll also be deleting the bottom polygon. And you'll notice that you can't actually see the inside of the model at that point, and that's fine. Poser doesn't like two-sided polygons, so we're not actually going to go back and put any of that in there. Okay, so right now it's not too bad. I can tell you one of the things that 3D Max does that's pretty good is when a model has a lot of polygons, such as Victoria 4, and it's next to a model that has very low polygon counts, such as this dress, you can actually scroll out a little bit. If you start to see poke through, such as what we're seeing right here, then there is poke through. That's actually the memory messing up, but it's a really good advantage. So what I'll be doing is normally I go back and fix that, but just because we're making this model pretty quick, I'm just going to leave it right where that is. Now I'm going to go ahead and click top section here, collapse that stack, and I'm just going to call this dress. So let's type in dress here. And one of the things I'm going to do before I uh, get out of this 3D Max application is go in and add some extra lines in for the edges here. Uh, we know that V4 will be bending at the knees and we know that bends will be taking place up here near the hip because that's where the human body bends, but especially near those knees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one edge. I'll do it out here so you can see it. One edge and then click loop, and that will select all the polygons that are all the way around. And as you can see, now I can pull and drag and move however I like with just that one section. However, I want more of these, so what I'm going to do is click camphor, and go ahead and pull that open a little bit more, a little more. I want to see this actually from the front or the left view, whichever one shows you the knees better. I'll try the left first. Go ahead and press F3 so we can get that wireframe mode. And we just want to make a quick spike here that the knees are actually further down. So what I'll be doing is pulling the selection downward. That's a much better, much better uh, view there. And I'm going to click OK. And immediately then click up here at the top and then click Loop. I'm going to pull this back up just to get everything nice and pretty again. Click that bottom one, click on loop there. And I'll go ahead and scale it. Right click, choose scale, do a uniform scale this time. And then just go ahead and move it backwards a bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect, of course. Imperfections are just fine when working with clothing. There are a lot of imperfections in clothing. So once that's there, we can see that we do have a few general lines around the knees, and that's fine. We're not trying to make this perfect or any amount of high detail. So then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and choose Mesh Smooth or Turbo Smooth, actually. So as a modifier for the dress, so I just click right over here in the modifier stack, choose Turbo Smooth, and then there we have a bit more uh, bends that we can have in this dress, a lot more polygons. Go ahead and rotate around. Dress looks a lot, a lot better now. And just so it's not completely boring, I'm zoom back in. And we'll do some really quick edits to it. 
just so we're not looking at just a fancy looking cylinder. I'll go back in here and right here we've got some edges and a few other things. What I'm actually going to do, click this edge here, or better yet, let's go to the front view. I'll click this edge here and this edge here. And what I'm going to do is choose ring or loop, actually. I believe it's loop, sure is. And what I'm going to do here is choose camphor again. And what the camphor will do is just separate these two out a little more. And that doesn't look like that's good for anything at the moment, but it is. So what I'm then going to choose is polygon and choose a more back facing. So I don't select the back of the dress, and I'm just going to select these polygons that were just pulled, or just created. I'm just selecting these by clicking on them. Once they're selected, what I'll then do, let's zoom in on a few of these, press F2 so we can see that selection a little better. Um, I'm going to press inset. Now what inset is doing here is it's actually creating uh, some new set of polygons. It's actually insetting the previous polygons inside there. So once that's done, I'm just going to then immediately click Extrude. And before I click it, though, I'm going to go to the left view, just so everyone can see what's going on. I'll turn back to the shaded view. And then press F2 so that's not so intense. Just so everyone sees what's going on, I'm going to scroll up to the top here. And I then press Extrude. And as you can see, the dress immediately extrudes out some polygons. You can actually extrude it the other way if you like, but I'm going to go ahead and do it outward. I'll choose to do that once, and only once, and then hit OK. Then I'll go ahead and back to my top stack and choose Turbo Smooth again. And let's see what we did. Let's go back to Perspective View, turn off the wireframe mode with the F4, and then let's see how the dress looks. OK. Also press J to get rid of that bounding box. Okay, so there's the dress at the moment. Again, looking much better than it did. Just so it's not completely boring. Okay, so once that's done, uh, what we'll do at this point is go back into Poser after exporting this out as a wavefront object. So, in order to do that, what we're first going to do is just make sure that this polygon count is okay. I think that's fine. We have just enough to bend the dress, not in a pretty way, but it'll bend okay. Uh, before we get out of here, let's just make sure the uh, center pivot point is correct. So what I'm going to do is go over the hierarchy and choose effect pivot point only. I'm going to go into my left view. And I don't want the dress to be pivoting on the bottom, so I'm going to choose uh, align to world. That way it's nice and straight as opposed to crooked all over the place. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the pivot point up at the top here near the hips. Um, and the reason why I do that is simply because if I do want to rotate the dress at all, in any manner, it's best that the pivot point is always next to the hips because human beings, animals, everything follows the hips. And humans, creatures, cars, I'm sure, if they even had hips. So let's go ahead and get back out of that. Now before I get out of here, I'm going to go ahead and just choose right-click, convert to poly. Then I'll go ahead and do file, export selected. Make sure you only have the dress selected, of course. And then you'll just name it whatever you like to name it. I'm just going to call it dress. Choose wavefront object. And then save it to wherever you save your documents. I'm going to go ahead and just save this on the desktop since it's faster to find. I'll click save. Here's the options. Now, we didn't do anything with any grouping, anything with any materials. We didn't put material zones, uh, nothing at all. The only thing for us that's really important is this right here where it says scale one. That's extremely important. If you recall, when we first made this model, we brought it in, uh, increasing it from one vertex scale to 300. So if we were to export it right now with that one, it would export at size 300. 
We're going to go ahead and do that just so that we see exactly what happens. So for right now, 